everyone. Uh, my name is Joseph Hopkins, speaking to you from Barcelona. Um, you remember Barcelona? Start again. Hello, everyone. This is Joseph Hopkins calling from Barcelona. You remember Barcelona? It's that place that people used to take Ryanair to and, to, and uh, EasyJet to, et cetera. Um, but things have changed a little bit now. Anyway, I am the director for the Center for Modern Languages at the Universitat Oberta de Catalunya. Just a second here, we're having a technical difficulty. Okay, hello everyone. As I said before, my name is Joseph Hopkins. Uh, we're calling from Barcelona. Um, I am the director of the Center for Modern Languages at the Universitat Oberta de Catalunya, or in English, the Open University of Catalonia. And I'm here with my colleague and co-presenter, Jackie Robbins. Jackie, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm not in Barcelona. I'm a couple of hours north of Barcelona, up on the Costa Brava. And I also work at the Universidad Oberta de Catalunya with Joe. And uh, we're delighted to be here. And we really hope you find this session useful. OK, so welcome. Welcome to Take Your Language Teaching Online. Um, Jackie and I are presenting on behalf of the seven members of the ICT Rev team. Um, for those of us who don't know about us, uh, ICT Rev is a project that is financed by the European Center for Modern Languages, or ECML for short, and the ECML is hosting this session. Um, so thanks a lot, ECML. We really appreciate it. Right? Um, we'll tell you a little bit about more, a little bit more about ICT Rev in just a few minutes. Right? Um, but first, we wanted to tell you a little bit about why we decided to do this webinar. Um, Anyway, we um, have been involved in various projects with the ECML um, since 2008, right? um, and these projects are aimed at helping teachers to um, integrate technology into their language classes. Right? Um, our team, the ICT Rev team, had a meeting um, just a few short weeks ago, and we started talking about what we could possibly do to help teachers out in a situation like this. Um, in other words, teachers who have been forced due to the COVID-19 crisis to move their teaching totally online, right? And who have little or no experience in this area, right? Um, we, know many teacher, teacher, we know many teachers are struggling with this, so we wanted to do something to help out, okay? Our initial idea was to have a smallish uh, workshop, kind of an intimate, highly interactive affair, um, but then the word got out. And once the word got out, we started getting hundreds of applications to participate. Okay? Um, so then we, we rethought what we were going to do. Um, we didn't want to turn anyone away. So we decided to um, turn our workshop into a webinar and offer it via Zoom, which we're now using, and broadcasting our Zoom session live via YouTube Live. Right? Um, that being said, we have tried to incorporate some interactive bits into the workshop, okay? So please have your phones ready. You'll need them for the session, okay? Um, also, we'd love to hear your comments, right? For this, you can write in the chat in the comments feature in YouTube, or you could write them via Twitter using a hashtag we'll tell you about in just a minute, okay? Um, so with no further ado, Jackie, would you like to give us an overview of the session? Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot, Joe. Um, let me just see if I can remember how to share screens in Zoom. I've got yeah, it all we're, we're all new so, to this, so. <laughs> we are so new to using Zoom. It's great, though. Okay. Um, hopefully you can see that. Can you see that, Joe? Let's see. Yes, I can. Okay, so in today's session, which will last an hour, hour and a half, something like that, um, we're going to start off telling you a little bit more about the ICT Rev project and where we come from. Um, then we're going to have a little bit of interaction with you with a couple of questions to ask you, and we'll look at a tool that we use for that. 
Um, then Joe's going to tell us, no, that's my job. I'm going to tell you about uh, <laughs> what you said in the short survey that we sent out to you uh, before the session when you registered. Uh, then Joe's going to come back and tell us about the ICT Rev inventory of uh, free online tools, which you can use for language teaching. Uh, we'll give you a little bit of time uh, during the session. We're going to sort of uh, go silent for about 10 minutes and give you some time to look at the inventory yourselves. And meanwhile, um, hopefully you're going to be writing some questions and some comments in the uh, in the live feed or via Twitter. And I think you can see down here on the right hand side of my screen, I'm guessing it's on your right as well. Uh, you can see the hashtag for posting questions via Twitter. So we have some colleagues who are monitoring those places and they relate those questions for us to talk about in the last section of the session. And we'll just finish up with a little in true EFL style um, what you'll take away from today, just reflecting on that very briefly. Okay. So uh, we're starting off talking about the interact the the ICT Rev project, which is you, Joe. So I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, and, and I'm going to share now. To you. All right. Okay, here we go. Um, just a brief introduction to the ICT Rev project, as I promised you earlier. Um, the ICT Rev project has a bit of a history. Let's see, my computer is going slow now. Let me try to get to the next slide. There we go, okay. Um, here are the team members of the ICT Rev project and our long name is Use of ICT in Support of Language Learning and Teaching. Right? Um, we have Pauline Ernest, also from the Universitat Oberta de Catalunya, the Open University of Catalunya. Um, Martina Emke, I'm going to try to say this, from the Koordinierungsstelle für Studium, Information und Beratung in Niedersachsen, for lo from Lower Saxony in Germany. Aline German Rutherford from the University of Ottawa. Um, I'm Joseph Hopkins, Joe Hopkins. Um, Sarah Heiser from the Open University in the UK. Jackie Robbins, who is with me today. And finally, Ursula Stickler from the Open University in the UK as well. All right. Um, all of the team members right now are watching us and supporting us in different ways. Um, a couple of them are womaning the chat, right, to see what comments you're putting in. And uh, one of them is womaning the Twitter feed as well. And we've got other people on tech support as well from the ECML, all right, which we'll talk about a little bit later. All right. So these are the members of the team. Just to give you a little background of where we're coming from. As I said earlier, we started back in 2008 um, with a project that was financed by the ECML called DOTS. Um, DOTS stood, stands for Developing Online Teaching Skills. Right? This was a brainchild of Ushi Stickler, who thought, well, there's lots of things people can be doing um, with technology in their teaching, um, but how can they get trained up in this? Right? Um, so out of this project, we developed a series of bite-sized mini training uh, learning activities so that teachers can train themselves up into using technology in their teaching. This was back in 2008, 2009, up to 2011. Um, at that time, we developed training modules for things like audio conferencing, um, for uh, blogs, for wikis, et cetera, okay? Um, then we got a second project with the ECML, which was known as More Dots, right? That started in 2012. And this was a continuation of Dots. Um, it was a mediation project in which we reached out not only to teachers in formal language teaching, um, but also to people involved in language teaching in informal and non-formal settings, right? That lasted until 2015. And as of 2016, up until now, um, we've been involved in ICT Rev. ICT Rev offers um, training and consultancy workshops um, for member states in the ECML. All right. Um, we usually we've done these um, in face to face sessions up till now. Um, currently, we cannot do them. Um, and we also have developed an online web resource called the ICT Inventory of ICT Tools, which we'll talk about later, um, which will give you, which has an inventory of many different uh, tools, applications that you could use in language teaching, okay? Um, 
where we've been. Here's a map showing us where we've been in Europe since 2008 with our various workshops. Um, we've done over 60 of them. Um, we've been to 29 European countries, um, plus China and Jamaica. China and Jamaica um, don't fit in the map here, so but we'll just mention them. Um, and we've reached out to over 1,000 language educators over the years, right? Um, and we've gained a lot of experience in this, um, in the sense that when we do a workshop, um, we talk to teachers, we find out about their situations, we find about, out about their needs, etc. And we also find out about very cool things that they've been doing using technology. And that knowledge that we get from the other teachers, and let me say that the ECML um, likes to refer to us as the experts. Um, we're not too comfortable being called the experts because really the experts are the people that teach us a lot of things in the workshops that we do. And then we're, we have the privilege of being able to bring that back, feed it back into workshops in other countries that we do afterwards, okay? Um, just to give you a general overview of what these workshops are like, um, before we have one, we work closely with a local coordinator at the national level, right? Um, we send out a questionnaire to find out about the participants' um, beliefs in teaching. What are their teaching beliefs? And we want to find out about what their specific needs are in terms of um, integrating technology into their teaching, right? Um, once we have that information, then we design the workshop. During the workshop, these are very interactive, hands-on type sessions with teachers um, working together, sharing information with each other and sharing information with us, which is very helpful for us. And then afterwards, um, we always encourage our workshop participants to disseminate what they have experienced, what they've found out about from the colleagues that they've met at the workshop with their colleagues back at their schools, their universities, et cetera, okay? So that in a nutshell, is what the ICT Rev um, project is all about. So now we've got a couple questions for you. Um, you've already started answering this, um, those of you who logged on ahead of time. And um, apologies to Greece. Um, many of you have logged on from Greece thinking that we started at five o'clock. That was correct but it was five o'clock Central European summertime. Um, so many of you were on, you've been waiting for us for an hour. Sorry about the delay for you. Um, it's really six o'clock for you, but anyway. Um, Jackie, do you wanna show us the Mentimeter results so far? I sure will. If you wanna stop, yeah, sharing, stop sharing, I'll share my screen now. Okay, so I've brought up the results of Mentimeter here. Let me know when you can see it. Yes. And for anybody who hasn't taken part in this, just go to menti. Uh, sorry, menti.com on your phone and use this code that's at the top of the screen here, 318386. So we're just gonna wait for a second because there may be people who hadn't done this before. We already have 523 people who've told us where they're from, which is awesome. Um, lots of people from Greece, that's why Greece is so big here but there's some people from Montenegro, from Austria, from the Netherlands, from Bangladesh. Um, and there it's going moving as more people are starting to put their countries in. So if you wait for a couple of seconds before we look at the next question, Joe, right. um, we were gonna talk about our backgrounds here, were we? Oh, right. I, one thing I wanted to say, I learned something. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but since Greece is at the top of the list, I just yeah. wanted to say, yeah, yeah, elada. Yay, Lala. I think that means hello, Greece in Greek. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, yeah, let's talk backgrounds. Yeah, I can see that. As you can see, I've got a very nice background here today <laughs> with my curtain hiding all the mess. And um, I tidied my books because I was a bit worried about the mess that was there before. Um, but what's happened to you? Are you actually sitting in front of that building, Joe? Yes, I am. I'm outside on the street right now in front of uh, the Casa the Pedrera. Uh, which those of you who've been to Barcelona, I'm sure you've seen before. No, I'm not. This is not. This is not my house. But I love these backgrounds. I know. Um, and you can do this in Skype too, as well now. Yes, 
Yes, yes. Zoom, we're using Zoom right now, but Skype also allows you to have a virtual background, um, which is a nice thing because if you're teaching from home, you don't necessarily want your students um, to see what's going on in the background or et cetera, if you have your own home. But you can add other things like this. I mean, I can, I can be in space if I wanted to. <laughs> All right. Um, I can also, OK, for more kind of academic, you know, serious meetings, I might want to have a background with my collection of rare books behind me. All right. That's what, um, that's what all the like experts that. are using on TV these days. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. Can you, see, can you see this word cloud is going crazy? 938 people and it's just more people putting in more countries and more countries. So it's instant and Menti meter yay and we'll show you a little bit more how that works behind the scenes now if you haven't seen it before it's really cool um, just to get instant um, input from students um, we've got nearly a thousand people who are putting their countries in already hey Spain awesome. is up there pretty big that's good France yeah. is pretty big as well yeah I'm happy to say that oh we got people from Canada it's fantastic Norway I'm gonna, Israel I'm, I'm gonna, I hope you've all still got your mobile phones on in your hands and you're waiting for me to go to the next slide because there's one more question for you. So fingers crossed that nobody's actually closed this. I'm going to go to the next slide, Joe. You reckon? OK, yeah, let's go. Let's go. OK, so we weren't sure. Look, we got over a thousand responses so far. Wow. Yeah, here we go. OK, so there's another question on the next slide on your on your device. So if you click on next. And again, we need to wait for a few seconds as people are uh, starting to write their answers. But look at that. Hey, guys, you are awesome. And Greece is in the middle again. <laughs> <laughs> are these the words you were okay. expecting? To see, An adjective Joe? which best describes your experience of teaching languages fully online. Yeah. I'm seeing lots of words like difficult, uh, stressful, but I'm also seeing some lovely words like exciting interesting so i mean oh terrifying daunting awesome liking awesome and i can honestly say that menti is amazing because <laughs> it's handling all of you putting in your yeah, we weren't so sure about this we've never used mentimeter with so many people and we thought it might explode mm -hmm. Yeah, we might get a rude email from Menti telling us we're rude and using using it with too many people. But look at that. Oh, we didn't break it. We haven't broken it yet. No. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So shall I show um, everybody how to put together a Menti? Just very yes. quickly. Well, okay. let's take another look at the words here. Challenging is the that's the first one. Challenging. Stressful. Yeah. Awesome's getting bigger. Awesome's getting bigger. Yeah, time. I'd say time consuming in there. The teachers I've been talking to who have been forced to go online these days all talk about how much time they're spending. Yeah. But, OK, let's show us show us how to create a Mentimeter, Jackie. OK, so I'm just going to drag um, drag across rather than refresh the screen. So apologies to everyone who's still doing that. We can come back and look at it again in a bit. Um, basically, you go into Mentimeter. You need to create an account to do this but it's free and um, I'm going to click on my presentations and I'm going to make a new presentation for you all to play with uh, very quickly just so you can see how quick it is to set up. So new presentation, uh, ICT Rev webinar, I'm going to call it number two because I've got one there already, create presentation and what shall we put here? I'm going to do a poll this time. As you can see on the right, there are different types of questions that you can use with the free version. So we've, you've seen the word cloud. Um, you can do a ranking. That's really nice. Um, but we're going to do a multiple choice, which is effectively a poll. OK, so the question is going to be, um, what's, what's the question? Oh, I know. Uh, what's your favorite animal? Come on. We, uh, we, we, which animal? is best is best i have a vested interest here okay dog cat or can i have third, a third option sure of course you can add you can add more. i'm gonna put um I, let's put horse it, it usually people. doesn't work very well to display if you have more than four options i'll just put three just for I'll display just put... purposes but right so i put those entries in there and you can see that already there's a code that's been generated. So I can give that code 
to the people I want to do this uh, quiz, uh, uh, this, this little Mentimeter poll ahead of time. Uh, it actually lasts two days, um, the, co the code, which is great. Click on present and uh, guys, fire away. Go to Menti. This is a, you have to go to Menti again and use this new code, which is 289569. So again, we need to wait for a few seconds. Right. Just as an aside, um, those of you who are, oh, there's one dog person. <laughs> Just for those of you who are watching the recording here, um, you won't be able to participate in these polls or in any of these activities um, after a couple of days because the code will have expired. So if you're getting an error message, it's because of that. Yeah. This is something that, that you, but it's definitely something you might want to do with your students. You could have a couple of basic comprehension questions. You ask them to read something in the, the live session, and in real time, you can ask them a couple Here of comprehension go. check questions. Oh, wow, Here look at that. Uh, it's, it's all turning out beautifully for me, Joe. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Can you tell I've got a dog? <laughs> what, if, what, if, what if we change the question? Which animal is best to eat? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can change it a little bit. <laughs> that might change the results a bit. Okay, so hopefully that if you haven't already used Mentimeter, please do try it with your students. Um, you can do this in real time and you can also do it asynchronously, but I think it's much nicer if you're presenting and people can actually see their responses coming up on the screen. Look at how real fast time. they are. We're almost at 500 responses so far. Do we wait to 1,000? Do I wait? Do I wait? Well, I don't know. Look, yeah, five, we'll five, I don't know how far we're going to get. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this is, I think this is my favorite tool. It's in, it's in our inventory. So the, the information about using it is all in our inventory, which Joe will show you quite soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we want to look at the survey results? Yeah, let's go to the survey results. Okay, so I'm going to minimize that screen. Maybe I'll just leave it. I wonder if I can leave it small. I'm just going to leave that there. The other one is still there. Look, that's still growing, by the way. We've Which got one? nearly 2,000 people have answered the first question, the question about adjectives to describe their... Can language. we take a look at that one again? Yeah, look at it. It's there. Can you see that? Not yet. There we go. Wow. Stressful is coming up, but interesting. I love the word, you know, people are saying it's interesting. Isn't that wonderful? Right. Interesting, stressful, time consuming, challenging, frustrating, awkward, all sorts of all sorts of ideas here. All right. I mean, the one thing is, is that it's 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 not easy. It's no. not easy. It does take time. Well, yeah. And I mean, at the moment, I mean, we're, we're working in an institution which has been online for a long time, right. <laughs> forever. And, and so we have things set up for online. But yes, we, we didn't mention this before, but yeah. our university is 100% online. So we've got the infrastructure that helps us behind this. But if you don't, um, you're starting from scratch. It's, it's yeah. a challenge. Yeah. And it's tough to you know, stay true to your pedagogical values um, when you're forced to go online. And I, I, I'm hearing lots of teachers saying, yeah, I'm doing Zoom sessions from nine in the morning till nine at night, and they're exhausted, of course. Yeah, so, they're okay, exhausted. And, just... and, and one of the things that uh, sometimes falls beside the wayside, or falls on the, beyond the wayside, or on the wayside, is the interaction um, yeah. with the students, right? Because um, it's, Difficult to manage that and to have an online classroom at the same time, but there are tricks, which uh, hopefully you'll see today or when you look at our inventory after today. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to move that out the way. Sorry, and it's going to go forward to the next slide. And can you see that one? It says it's survey results. Yes. Okay, so we asked you a couple of questions. It was a very quick survey, um, just to help us sort of make this session a little bit more specific for you. Thank you for your uh, responses. We've got tons. Thank you very much for your responses. I'm not sure how many were. Last time I heard there were sort of 1,300 responses in there, but that was 24 hours ago. So I'm guessing it's gone up. Um, we'll go, we asked you about the, the tool types that um, you said would be most useful to know about for your teaching context. And, and these are the top 10 that you said. Um, so you asked uh, about quiz makers. So we mentioned very briefly Mentimeter, um, but there are others. Um, we'll talk about all of these in a bit more detail. I'm just showing you the results from the survey <coughs> at, 
at the moment. Um, you asked about game apps as well, Kahoot. Um, it's uh, one of the ones on our inventory as well. I know that most of you, um, most people, seem to be very, very au fait with using Kahoot, which is wonderful. But we've got a game app with, that we on our inventory called Akinata, which we'll, we'll show you in a moment. Um, I was really pleased to see this, the, these two, this audio record, edit, share, and video record, edit, share, very sort of similar um, needs where teachers are wanting to be able to record maybe a video session or an audio session for their students and then be able to manipulate those and, and edit and then share them with their students. So we'll, we'll show you a bit more about those tools in a moment. Uh, again, question answer management, that's kind of similar to course management, we felt. And so we, I think that in some cases, for some of you, it may be down to your institution to decide on that. But in other cases, you can do these things yourselves if you've got a language school or if you're working independently. Um, crossword puzzle creators, story creations as well. I'm guessing more for the younger learners, but not necessarily. Video conferencing, we, we've already talked a little bit about Zoom and Skype. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then uh, the video recording for giving maybe feedback, screencast o matic um, mm -hmm. is on our inventory. We'll, yeah, talk, we'll about talk a little again. bit more about this later. Yeah, exactly. Um, we also asked you what you found was the main, what was your main difficulty um, having to go straight online? And so we put your answers in a word cloud. Um, it's a rather gaudy colors. I didn't make this, Joe. Hey, come on. <laughs> No, it's lovely, but it, did, I love it, fuchsia. it is. So basically, this was all of the words that you wrote, all of the phrases and stuff that you wrote in the survey comments, and they went into a word cloud generator. And of course, what a word cloud generator does is it makes the most frequent words appear bigger. And so we were delighted to see that basically it was a lack of online teaching tools, which is what we're here to tell you about. So this was nice. Um, you, you didn't ask about word clouds, but I might be worth mentioning that word clouds are not only useful for looking cool, maybe printing them on a t-shirt, you can use them pedagogically. Joe, have you got a couple of uh, suggestions for how they can be used in, in class? Well, um, one thing you can do, um, I've seen some teachers do is Say, for example, you want to have your students read a text, right? And you want them ahead of time to predict what the text is going to be about before mm -hmm. they read it, all right? In order to activate schemata and enhance reading comprehension and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do is take your text, mm -hmm. the whole text, and run it through a word cloud creator, right? Yeah. Um, it generates a word cloud, and you might get an idea of what the text is going to be about. If it does give you an, uh, an idea of what the text is about, you give that to your students and then you ask them, so I'm going to give you a text and it has these words in it. What do you think the text is going to be about before they read it, right? Yeah. So they can make predictions mm -hmm. and then they can test out those predictions when they're actually reading, right? And uh, by <laughs> activating these schemata, mm -hmm. um, uh, hopefully their comprehension will be enhanced. They can also do that with a listening comprehension if they've got the, the tape script, the old tape script. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, can, they can do the same. So it can be used for reading and listening. Right, and then right. an another idea that I heard that somebody in one of the workshops told me about, which I thought was great, was um, get students often struggle when it comes to presenting themselves. Um, and so if you give them the task of writing their presentation and preparing it. And then they put all of that text into a word cloud generator themselves and present from one slide, which is just the word cloud. Uh, they don't have full sentences to read out. So you don't get what I hate, which is PowerPoint karaoke, um, when they're just kind of reading what's on the screen. And they do have to read a little bit more naturally and, and explain what they want to. So that, that's just a couple of ideas that we've heard along the way. Um, okay, let's look at the, there was one other question we asked, and we asked for some comments about which aspects you think after all of this is over, not just the webinar, I'm talking about the whole thing of uh, the COVID situation, um, what aspects you think you might take back into your regular teaching? Um, I did I did hear, you know, somebody said uh, nothing. <laughs> They're just really looking forward to getting back to regular teaching. But I'm not going to read these out, but you can see there, um, there's a nice comment here, um, learning by playing. And they're fine, this teacher is saying, that, you know, they're finding that, going online is giving them the opportunity to share more opportunities to play, learn by playing for the, with their students, which is just lovely. 
Well, I think a nice one here is also the necessity of a thorough explanation of the task, right? Um, that's something that you learn about when you go all online that you don't really have the chance to, okay, am I supposed to do this? I'm supposed to do that. This kind of negotiation that happens about what we're supposed to do for the task. So the explanations have to be crystal clear. That's mm -hmm. a nice one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so and and th this, this also brings up the question, will we ever go back to regular teaching? What is regular teaching? Um, uh, will this situation change everything? Forever? I don't know. We don't know. We don't know the answer to that, but yeah. sometimes it, I ask myself. It's pretty scary. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop sharing. So I think because I'm going to hand over to you and your okay. screen. So hopefully that will disappear. Yep. Okay. So I think Joe is going to talk to you a little bit now about the inventory. Right. Okay. Let me go back to the screen sharing here. Just a minute. And... Make sure I'm sharing the right one. Okay. Okay, which brings us to um, the ICT Rev inventory of ICT tools and open educational resources, right? Which we told you we would tell you about later. This has been um, a main aspect of the ICT Rev project. Um, and we're just going to show you a little bit about what that is, right? First of all, let's see, let's change the next slide. There we go. I think all of you know that there are all sorts of tools, applications out there, right? Um, there's a huge number, right? Um, what is the problem for teachers? The problem is, how do you select from so many of these, right? And then there's an added difficulty of which one of these tools is actually free. That's important, right? Um, which one of the tools um, still exist because tools appear and they disappear all the time. Other tools used to be free, but then they start charging for their services once they start taking off. So how do you keep up with this? Um, keeping up with this entails having time. It's time consuming, right? Now, of course, now that everybody's under lockdown, you've got more time than ever, right? I'm kidding. I know you don't. <laughs> I know you don't. Teachers um, under lockdown are uh, probably more stressed for time than they ever have been before, right? Many of them, right? So anyway, um, with this in mind, um, this is where the ICT Rev inventory comes into play, okay? Um, this is what it looks like. All right, we'll go to the live one in a minute, all right? Um, the inventory has tools that are freely available, as I said before, they're all free, right? We've got two main criteria for selection of being on the inventory, to be included in the inventory. One, and most importantly, is that the tool or application needs to be potentially useful for language teachers or their learners, right? And two, they must be freely available, right? Or at least there must be a freely available version that is useful for teachers so that they don't have to pay for it, right? Um, you might ask yourselves, why free, right? One, this is the more obvious one, um, schools simply, schools in many areas simply don't have the funding to purchase licenses, right? There's limited funding for education. Um, funding is more and more scarce, right? Um, but also in places where there is funding, there's a problem. Um, a lot of times teachers have to go through bureaucratic hoops to get the funding approved to buy a license, right? There's money for the license, but it might take months before you actually get the funding approved so that you can buy the license so that you can use it with your students. But you want to use that tool with your students on Monday, right? So it doesn't solve your problem if you have to wait a long time, right? Anyway, let's go to the live version, the website here. Okay, I'm just waiting for it to load up. Okay, here's the live version. It looks a little bit different from the slide before because the slide before was taken a few months ago. Um, there are now currently 142 tools on our inventory, right? Um, 
the latest tool, which is Hesvenska, appears in the upper left-hand corner, right? This is a tool for learning Swedish that was suggested to us by one of our, one of our workshop participants, right? Um, it also appears in the right-hand column where it says latest edition right here, right? That uh, latest edition normally appears higher up, but since we have the information about today's webinar, or the webinars that we're giving um, here that takes up that space. But anyway, okay. Um, what else? An important thing about our inventory, an important aspect we think is that it is user generated. Um, the tools here have been suggested to us by teachers, right? Um, because they've used them before, they found them useful for their classes, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, generally, they have been suggested by participants in our workshops, but they have also been suggested by people who have simply visited our website. And actually, since we started advertising for this webinar, um, we have been getting more suggestions from you um, about tools that can be added. So thanks for that. So anyway, um, if you've been looking, if you've been looking, um, uh, can I zoom in? I'm, I'm being told that it might be hard for people to see here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so that you can see the inventory. I hope you can see that a little bit better now. Okay. I'm going to do one more. There we go. Um, very importantly, as I said before, this is user generated. We rely on people's suggestions, recommendations. We've got a button here that says suggest a tool. If you click on that one right here, Say your favorite tool, the one that you use with your students, they love it, you love it, doesn't appear here. All you need to do to suggest it to us is give us the website, right? And you can put in a comment if you want. And you also have to indicate that you're not a robot, please. And that's all you need to do. You need to submit it and that's it, right? So what happens afterwards? Once you've suggested a tool to us, we get a message. This goes into our database. We look at that database, we look at the tool um, to make sure that it fulfills our criteria. One, that it truly is freely available still, right? And two, that it's useful for language teaching and learning, okay? Um, we also do, let me go back to the inventory here, okay. We also do checks every six months we revise every single tool that we have on the inventory to make sure that they still exist. And if they still exist, to make sure that they're still freely available, right? Um, you may find something on here right now um, that is no longer available, um, but in our next revision, we'll catch that and we'll get rid of it. So this will help teachers to kind of keep up to date with, with what is currently available, what's not, et cetera, okay? Um, uh, let's see. Let me show you the filters. Below the suggested tool, you'll see that you have a series of filters right here, okay? Um, and say, for example, you're looking for a game app to use with your students. We'll just tick that box right there, click on filter. and then you will get the names of game apps that appear on the inventory right now. We've got Kahoot, Trading Card, Cre Trading Card Creator, Duolingo, which a lot of you might know, Charades, Akinator, um, Genelia Romanica. Romanica is um, useful for students who are learning not just one, but more than one Romance language. It's kind of a neat thing. Anyway, um, we can just pop into Akinator, pop into any one of these tools, you will get you will get a description of the tool, a short evaluation, cost, the website. Usually there is a video associated with this, with a tutorial. And then we've got these categorized in various different ways, all right? So um, that can show you what you can do with Akinator, right? And you can decide whether you want to use that, whether you want to explore that tool more or whatever, all right? Um, let's try another one. Uh, let's try, for example, crossword puzzles, okay? All right, I'm gonna filter right here. Oh, no matches? 
Don't forget. No, to I did that on purpose. Ah. I did that on purpose. <laughs> I did that on purpose. You need to be careful with the filters, right? It's always best to suggest or to only tick one at a time, right? Yeah. I tick two here. So I would need a game app that's also a puzzle, crossword puzzle creator, right? Yeah. So if I un a deselect game app, do the filter again, click on filter again, then I'll get three here. Hot Potatoes, which is an oldie, but a goodie, yeah. it's still around. Um, Eclipse Crossword, Learning mm -hmm. Apps. I like the Learning Apps. Um, it's actually not just for creating online crossword puzzles, but you can do lots of other things with it. Puzzles, quizzes, what have you. There's lots of stuff in Learning Apps. If you're interested in finding out about that, just come here, you can watch the video and learn a bit more, okay? Um, one filter at a time. There's something else I wanted to tell you, which is we also have other filters based on type of interaction. Do you want to group, group pair work, group pair work with the classmates, outsiders, individual work presenting? You can get apps based on the skills, also on content, whether you supply the content or whether it's a website that already provides you with the content. Okay, so all of these are quite useful. Now, we're going to let you go back to this in a few minutes. We're going to give you some time to browse, as Jackie said earlier, uh, mm -hmm. but when we get back to that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look again at the top 10 tool types and talk so, a little bit about so those. That everybody, right? that, everybody it marked, that everybody indicated, yeah. Right. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Do you have that? Uh, do you, oh, okay, do you want me to share that one? Yeah. Oh, I can, I can share it. Just give yeah, me a second. Well, here we go. I'll go back to share. I've got about a hundred things open at the same time. I, I can't, can't believe my computer hasn't blown up. <laughs> <laughs> Here okay. we go. So yeah, we were just going to chat a little bit more about some of these. I, I did mention them and you've talked about them a, a little bit as well. Just bearing in mind that uh, going online is not, you know, the it's not we're not in optimum conditions going online suddenly and moving or teaching online and I think a lot of teachers are being told or being forced to do their teaching synchronously as in 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 a video conferencing like this um, that's fine but if you've got you know six classrooms a day or six, six groups a day I mean it's you need to to get uh, students working on their own um, and, or working in pairs and for that reason zoom is wonderful as I'm sure a lot of you know or Microsoft Teams I believe as well. Um, Zoom is great because you can actually put students into different groups and then go around and check on how they're working. Right, the breakout room feature breakout is very, room. very nice. That's exactly right, exactly. Um, and we've talked about Mentimeter. Socrative, um, that came up a while ago. It's been around for a while. I'm not sure how many people are still using that. Is that still quite popular, Joe? Oh yeah, I think people are still using it Yeah, quite a bit mm -hmm. for, for questions and things like that, yes. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. what's really come alive now is Kahoot Live. People have, I've seen lots of tweets from, from colleagues who are using Kahoot Live with their students in their sessions, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we put two very different tools here, two, two examples for- okay, for the game apps, yeah, Kahoot and Akinator. Do you want to look at Akinator? Yeah, do you want to play? Do you want to play? Let's, let's I think you should, I think as you're sharing now, you should click and I have to think of somebody. Go on. Okay, I <laughs> I go to Akinator? Yeah, you go to Akinator. You're already sharing now. Go okay. on. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. I've got a piece of paper. We thought here. this was fun. We thought this was fun for, um, if you wanted to um, have your students practice questions, for example. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's an application. Now it automatically appears for me in Spanish um, because it's detecting my browser, right? Mm -hmm. My browser's in Spanish. Um, but if you go here, you can do this in Japanese, German, Portuguese, I think that's Arabic, French, English, Spanish, Russian, et cetera, et cetera, all right? There's lots of different options right here. But for the purposes of our webinar today, we're going to use English. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, it's asking me whether I want to allow the advertising. I'm just going to close this window, which you can do. Right. This is something that um, we can play on our computer, mm -hmm. but your students can use their, I, or their iPhones or they can also use it on their Android phones as well. Okay. Mm. So let's play. 
Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do characters, right? So what what do I have to do? Jackie, you need to think of a character. Okay, I'm, I'm, a famous I've got... person, fictional, I... whatever you want. Okay, I have a famous per person. I've written them on my piece of paper here, so it's so we're not cheating. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> so let's go, and we're gonna get the first question. So I'm gonna ask you the questions. Um, Jackie, is your character a girl? No. No. So I'm going to mark no. Uh -huh. Does your character make YouTube videos? No. No. You might want to zoom in a bit if you can. Oh, okay. I'm seeing. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Whoop. Okay. Okay. Uh, is your character a real person? Yes. Yes. Is your character older than 35 years old? Yes. Is your character dead? No. No. Does your character live in America? Uh, no, I don't think so. Is your character a politician? No. No. Oh, I think you might be. Oh, I know. Oh, did That's you make a mistake? I All think right. I'm Is your character an actor? <laughs> no, no. Is your character linked with sports? No. No. Does your character personally know you? I wish. No. <laughs> no, I wish is not an option. Is your character related to music? Yes. Yes. Is Does your character play in a rock band? Yes. Is your character English? Yes. Okay. Does your character speak Telugu? I don't think so. No. Well, we're just going to say no. Does your character write about whales? Uh, no, I don't think so. Is your character Uruguayan? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, sometimes the questions are a little wacky here. Yeah, that's Is a your character a main vocalist? Yes. Was your character already famous in the 70s? No. No? Was your character famous in the 80s? No. Nope. No. Nope. Does your character have a famous brother? No. Nope. Okay, we're going to a couple more questions. Has your character ever shown his face? Um, yeah. He's yeah. famous. Does your character have a solo album? No. Is your character part of a trio? Uh, no. Does your character wear a black uniform? No. Last question. Can you Is guess your character associated with the color yellow? Oh, wow. It's like, he's in, yeah, it's like you're in my head. Yes. <gasps> All right. Let's see. Can you see my, I don't know if you can see my, in my yes, camera. Yes, we can. We can. Oh, it worked. I hope everybody, okay. hope everybody else can see. It was. It was. It was Chris Martin. Chris Martin. Wow. Chris Martin from Coldplay. Very <laughs> good. Very good. To be honest with you, we tried this a couple of times yesterday, and it didn't always work. But yeah. um, it didn't always guess. But that's not the point. The point is that your students get to ask questions, listen to questions, answer questions, and things like that. So yeah, and they, 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 I mean, they've got the questions up, up on the screen for themselves. So they're actually right. reading the questions out. But once they've done that a couple of times, they can then play without the tool, without the game, and start doing their own questions. So right. Yeah. right. OK, so we're going to close that. And we're going to go back to our slide here. Yeah. OK. Uh, I think we're um, <coughs> Just a few more comments here. Um, we've talked about some of these. Audio rec record, edit, share. Mm -hmm. um, Audacity, if you're not familiar with Audacity, is uh, classic. It's freely available. Um, it's very complete. Yeah. Um, however, um, the learning curve is a bit steep. So it's not the easiest thing to start with, right? If you want something that's just a record and listen to the record and share the recording, vocal room might be what you want to use. It's just very, very simple, right? Yeah. Um, question answer management, if you want to do tests, quizzes with your students. If you've got access to Moodle, Moodle will allow you to do that. Google Classroom as well. Um, even oh, if you don't have access to Google, Google Classroom, you can use Google Forms. Um, yeah. If you Google um, how to make a quiz or a test with Google Forms, you can find out how to do that. Jackie, sorry. I was just gonna say about, actually, I'll, I'll wait until we get to course management. Sorry, I'll just right. gonna say something about Moodle. Okay, all right. Um, file sharing, syncing, there's Google Docs, which you can use with your students, Dropbox, where you have a shared Dropbox. Um, problem with doc Dropbox is um, most people I know are kind of reaching their limit yeah. of the free version and uh, they can't do any more, so. 
that's something to bear in mind. We saw crossword puzzle correct, uh, creators. Um, I showed you learning apps, um, but there's also Eclipse crossword if you want to try that. Um, we've got two story creation. Just, just a question Joe, yeah. about, about the crossword maker. Um, do they need to print out the crosswords or is that something that can happen online? No, no, they can both, these both can be done online. As far as I know, I mean, we might have to look at that a little, little, little bit more detail. Learning apps, definitely online. Eclipse crossword, I believe can go online as well. Because mm -hmm, I think okay. that's important for, for learners. I mean, I don't have a printer. Right, I mean, I you know, anymore. right now, printing out crosswords for students to do at home and passing them out to them is not an option. So um, you definitely want something that can do crossword puzzles for you and be able to, so that you can um, send them to your students online. Okay. Exactly. Um, we talked a little bit about video conferencing, Skype and Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, Skype's very easy to use, lots of people have it. Mm -hmm. um, Zoom is also very easy and it has that nice feature of the breakout rooms. Um, as we said before, both Skype and Zoom, this is a feature that's important to me, both have the option of a virtual background, <laughs> which I really like, but anyway. Oh, I haven't changed mine. I'm going to change mine. In yeah. <laughs> um, we've also got uh, video record, edit, share, um, Screencast-O-Matic. Do you want to say something about that, Jackie? I did, yeah. Just a couple of things um, about Screencast-O-Matic. So we, we use it, our teachers use it, and I know a lot of teachers use it for giving feedback to students. So um, they'll they'll put the learner's work up on, the, on their screen, they'll start recording, and they'll chat through as they could go correcting the writing, and then they'll send the video and the corrected piece of text back to the learner. So right. that's a very nice personal way of correcting, and the learner also gets listening practice. Right. And what Screencast-O-Matic does is it actually takes a video of what you have on your computer screen. Mm. Um, so you can write things, you can make comments. It takes a video of what's on the screen, plus it records your voice. And it's free. And it's free. And it's free. And VoiceThread, is that the one that you told me with the presentation? VoiceThread, yeah. Um, it, a VoiceThread allows you or allows learners or uh, teachers um, to upload images. Mm -hmm. All right, to the system. And those images can then be commented on. Each image will have a page, right? And the students can, or students or teachers, can write a written comment, an audio comment, or a video comment, mm -hmm. right, on each one of those images. Those images could be pictures, but they could also be a PowerPoint presentation, right? Mm -hmm. You can upload your entire PowerPoint presentation to VoiceThread, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and then each one of the slides will be a separate screen. Mm -hmm. And on each one of those slides, people can make comments. Um, you could have the presenter, if you want to present, um, making a video or audio comments on each one of the slides, and in effect, doing an online um, video presentation yeah. right, of their PowerPoint presentations, mm -hmm. or whatever they're using for their slides. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we get to course management. Uh, we've got Google and Classroom. I mean, if you want to find out about any of these tools, any more of these, any of these tools in more detail, um, simply go back to our inventory and uh, take a look. Which, we'll, okay. which we're going to ask you to do in just a moment. I right. was just going to mention about Moodle. Um, I'm not sure about Google Classroom. I, I, I don't use it, but I'm, I'm guessing they probably have a, the same option. But I was just going to mention the option with Moodle that you've got forums and so this idea of um, asynchronous learning where you don't need to be in zoom or in a skype session with your learners for them to still be working together and helping each other and asking questions and supporting each other in their learning so i like moodle from the point of view that you have a forum yeah. um, and that you know that learners can write to and as the teacher uh, you can um, moderate that rather than control the whole you know the whole learning right. well i often say to teachers in our context you know the role of the online teacher is not one-to-one -one learning with however many number of students you have it's one to many learners and right. so you, you kind of need to step back a little bit right and, and one thing also to bear in mind is that the teaching with students doesn't always have to happen in real time it's not you just being with the students um with a moodle forum for example or google classroom forum um, you can ask the students to engage in written discussions, right? Yeah. So they're um, posting their opinions on a topic or writing about something and interacting with one another, answering each other, etc. Um, that doesn't have to happen in real time. 
um, sometimes we forget about that. And mm -hmm. it's something that maybe sometimes needs to be exploited a little bit more, right? Activities mm -hmm. that students can do in their own time, right? Mm -hmm. And don't, don't require the teacher to be present in real time, okay? Yeah. yeah. All right, so I think that brings us to the next part um, of our webinar, which is the part where we shut up. Um, we're gonna give you, we're gonna give you 10 minutes and we're gonna give you the opportunity to uh, have a browse around um, the inventory. And in the meantime, we're gonna take a look at some of the comments and questions and see what people have been saying so far. And we'll come back and comment on that. Now, for this next part, let me share my screen again. Yeah, please don't go away. Come back. No, don't we're, go we're, away. We're, come back. We're not going away forever. We're, we're just going to go silent for about 10 minutes. And That's just right. so you can follow the time, you're going to do something cool, aren't you, Joe? You've got a new tool. Yes, I am. Just a second here. <laughs> just a second. I'm having a little technical multi-screen issue here. Just a minute. Okay, here we go. Share screen. And I want to share that one. Okay. There we go. Hang on. Ah, uh, there you go. That's okay. Nice. So what we want you to do in this 10 minutes that we're going to give you for this is think of a new learning activity that you would like to do with your students online, right? Browse the ICT Rev inventory and try to find a tool that you could use for this new activity. You've got the URL here. It's www.ecml.at slash ICT. Mm -hmm. um, we've also provided you with the QR code, those of you who have QR code readers. Um, we've got a timer up here. Um, we're going to give you 10 minutes for this. Right? We're going to set the timer and it's going to count down for those 10 minutes. Um, and this is all done using a tool called Classroom Screen, which is also available on our inventory. Um, it allows you to set up a screen for your students. You could do this online. You could do this in your face-to-face uh, -face regular classes, um, if you have an interactive whiteboard, et cetera. Um, if you wanna know more about Classroom Screen or you wanna try it out yourself, in the bottom right-hand corner is the URL plus the QR code if you want to use that for that, okay? So with no further ado, we're gonna leave you on your own for 10 minutes to do this and we're gonna set the timer. Yeah, okay. but exactly. But in true, in true Arnold Schwarzenegger fashion, we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Okay. So here we go. We're going to set the timer. And first of all, me. wait a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to turn off our microphones. Uh, I no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not seeing classroom screen anymore on there. Oh, sorry. I, I, missed, I messed around here. Just a second here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. All right, we're going to set the timer and leave you on your own. Go to it.
Hi again, everybody. Our colleagues have just told us that the inventory seems to have crashed. Um, uh, I think we've got too many simultaneous users right now. Yeah. Let me just see. Yeah. Okay. So we, we've we've stopped our ten minute activity, um, but we have taken a look at some of the comments um, that you've been sending us. So um, we might just go with those. Jackie, um, do you want to? Yeah. Just... I'm going to read, read Fire it. away. Um, we obviously cannot talk about all of the comments that you've been sending in, um, we'll do but we'll our best. try to get to somebody. Yes, Jackie? We, I said, say, we'll do our best. We'll do our best. <laughs> um, OK, so yeah, there's a variety of questions and comments. Let's start with the comments, um, because they're just really nice. Thanks, guys. No, um, so we've got a beautiful uh, message from Gabija, um, a surname I cannot read out loud. I will say it wrong. I'm sorry. Just says great webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Gabija. And Sophia Kahn mm -hmm. says great job making the webinar interactive. We're doing the best we can in the situation with so many people participating. So thank you. And um, Ms. Anayor says that the inventory has kept her up many nights exploring. <laughs> so oh. hope that's really nice to know that she's obviously come across the inventory before and uh, she's already found it useful. So, you know, feel free to spread the word about the inventory. You know, that's, that, that's really great. OK, so we have questions and comments here um, about some specific mm -hmm. tools. Some of them are about Zoom, Joe. Um, some Georgia Manetta is asking, um, do we have to have a paid edition of Zoom to have backgrounds like that? And I can tell you, honestly, we check this ourselves and you don't. It's free with the background. The backgrounds are free. Um, you do, though, need to download Zoom. If you're just clicking on a link to a Zoom meeting on your phone, for example, you probably can't put in the backgrounds. Um, but if you download the actual um, the application, then you can. So, right. yeah, I guess Damos, I mean, I'm just gonna, hang on, right. let me just change, I'm gonna change my background. You're gonna change your background? I'm, I'm missing my it's, dog. It's getting can later, I, so I'm going to change my background. Can I bring background? my dog into the, into the chat? There of she is. course. Oh. <laughs> oh. Or I can go to a field of poppies, isn't that lovely? I'm going to, this is the view from my home, <laughs> up on the hill. Well, this, this, this is a photo I took, actually, of my garden. It's actually there, so well, kind of that way. Right. I don't know which way I'm looking, <laughs> but anyway. So yeah, you can play around with that. But the, as you can see, I end up with a rather bouffant hairstyle if I put a background. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Yeah, that and I tidied happen. up. I that tidied up. To me, my, there's nothing. To, my hands disappear sometimes, but that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> um, somebody has asked a very good question here, though. Sophia again uh, says that there are concerns that Zoom is not so safe a platform as it compri compri compromises users' personal data. What is our opinion of that, Joe? Right. Do you want to discuss that? You would you would have do your research, look at it. Um, Zoom got uh, a lot of press right at the beginning of lockdown um, because there were incidences of people who were not supposed to be entering sessions, entering sessions, and doing things that you wouldn't want your students to see, or maybe you wouldn't want to see yourselves either. Um, this was because Zoom, um, by default, in the beginning, before uh, lockdown happened, um, allowed anybody with the link to enter the session. Um, yeah. Since that time, the security uh, measures of Zoom, as far as I've read, right, um, have been tightened. Um, what we would recommend is that if you're doing a Zoom session, um, use the very latest version. Mm -hmm. um, the very latest version I was just prompted to download today and install version 5.0. But when you're seeing, if, if you're seeing this in the recording, there might be a new version. So get the latest one. Um, the latest one seems to have encryption, which allows for more security. Right? Yeah. Um, and also by default, your meetings are closed. Close well, your meetings. They're not make your meetings accessible. Yeah, um, they're closed, but they're not locked. So we actually locked right. this one, didn't we? So we locked so, so nobody could get in. Yeah. Uh, right. So that, but that's an extra thing. You just right. you know, one of the one of the options. And in order for us to get in, we needed to have a username. I'm sorry, a pa um, an ID for the session and a password. All right. Yeah. Make sure that those are the options that are selected. Now Zoom has those selected by default, mm -hmm. but in the past they didn't. So mm -hmm. it was a little easier for mm -hmm. hackers to get in. That being said, 
do your research, look online, see what people are saying, but don't look at the messages from the beginning of March yeah. of this year. Um, look at the most recent things and see what people are saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Stefania Miranda asks how we both share our screens. Um, I mean, it's just one of the options in, in Zoom. So you get the option at the bottom to share your screen. And again, in the options. So for example, if you're holding a Zoom session with students and you want them to be able to share screens or you don't, you can actually select that. So, you know, just stop kids putting in their own screens <laughs> that you don't want them to, unless you really right. want them to. So again, you need to know your, you know your students better than anybody, you know, you know, right. who are gonna be the troublemakers, et cetera. Um, There's one other then, thing about Zoom, about the pay version, um, uh -huh. the non-pay version, only allows you to have 40 minutes um, in most countries. In some countries under lockdown, this 40 minutes was done away with, the 40 minute limit. Yeah. Um, but where we are here in Spain, the limit uh, went back into effect. Yeah. So after 40 minutes, you do get kicked out again if the, you're having a session with more than two people. If it's yeah. two people, you can go on forever, I think. Mm -hmm. But that's so the current situation now. It is May 6th. Uh, 19 or 2020. So, um, mm -hmm. if you're watching this a week from now, the conditions might be different. Yeah. And just to go through exactly how to change the background, we can't share screens and show you that. We tried between right. ourselves and it's not possible. But basically, if you have Zoom open um, and you on the bottom left hand corner of your screen, when you have Zoom open, uh, where it says video, uh, stop video, you click on the little arrow there, click on video settings and you'll see all the options there. And you can set up the background ahead of time um, with nobody else around and see how wonderful you look, you know. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. More questions. Mentimeter. A couple of questions about Mentimeter, which we've talked about. C um, can we vote several times on Mentimeter? Yeah, um, you can and you can't. You can set up a Mentimeter poll or word cloud, whatever, right? Um, and uh, when you do that, you can say you only allow one response per person, yeah. or you can add multiple or you can select multiple responses per person. So it's up to you. If you want your students to be able to answer multiple times, then select that option. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, next question. Can Mentimeter be integrated into other apps? As far as I know, it's not possible. If we're talking about embedding, into uh, a blog or a website or something like that, right? But there is a tool on the website. Jackie, were you able to find this? No, I didn't have a chance to look for it. But did you say it was cross something, no? Yeah, cross something. And I can't remember the name right now off the top of my head. Sorry. Um, wait a minute. You look that one up and I'll- I'll look, look that one up. You look that one up and I'll, I'll go for the next question. Um, Great, it says here, Mentimeter is a great polling tool. This is a comment about it, um, so it's not a question. Somebody said, Mentimeter is a great polling tool, perfect for student participation and makes lessons more interactive. Plus the shy students don't need to worry about mistakes as it's anon anonymous. That's a really, really excellent point. I don't have the name of the person who wrote that, but great point to make. Um, and I was going to mention that earlier when we were talking about Google Docs as a place for students to be um, writing. Um, while students, we talked about how they can file share and how they can all do their own work, et cetera, using Google Docs. But also in a, in a classroom, you could open up a Google Doc, send the link, make sure that the link, anybody can write on it with, that, with the link. So it's not, uh, you know, with a username. And then students, again, anonymously can go writing on the screen in real time with each other. And you can do that in face-to-face -face classrooms, but obviously now in this sort of context as well. So that, that, that point about shy students not worrying about making mistakes and actually sort of getting a voice in, in these new circumstances is really, really important. That is good. That's nice. That's nice. Sometimes yeah. you find that your shy students, the ones that weren't saying anything, all of a sudden open up online. And, yeah. um, a lot of the peer pressure disappears and yeah. uh, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. I, I do have the name of the tool that allows you to uh, embed polls into a website or into uh, a blog, for example. It's called Crowd Signal. Okay, Crowd, Crowd Signal. Okay. Okay. Great. It's on. It's on the inventory, so you can you can check it out there. Of course, it is. <laughs> 
Um, somebody is suggesting, Jana has suggested, suggested using Genially for presentations. Uh, she says it's uh, really cool and inspires creativity. Um, I don't think that one's on the inventory. So Jana, get onto the Suggestor tool on the inventory and uh, we'll look it up. And if Genially? it's free, Genially with double L. I believe so, it is. So that oh it is on the it is on oh, the I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it is. Let me okay, just check great. that for you. Great. We've got so many, we don't know them all. Yeah. But uh genially, if it's not. Wait a minute, what type of tool is it? Yes, it is. It is on the tool. It's it's on the inventory. Sorry. Awesome. Okay, so yep. Uh Bokaru, somebody's talking about giving making comments about Bokaru as well, which we mentioned. Um Biologues apparently is another one uh recommended by somebody from Greece whose name I cannot read. I'm sorry. Um and they say it's the favorite with older students, so that's lovely. Um and somebody's just saying they love classroom screen. Yeah, we do too. Um awesome. All right, there's a qu question here, Joe. Uh this this person, Stella, has, says that her students have prepared PowerPoint presentations uh, for for a, hang on, let me just see if I can read that better, for a project. What can they use to share their work and give access to their to their PowerPoint so that everybody else can see it? Right. Um, number of possibilities. We talked about VoiceThread before. Um, the PowerPoint presentation could be uploaded to VoiceThread and then voiceover comments there. Um, mm -hmm. You could also use SlideShare. Mm. SlideShare is another one where you can upload your entire PowerPoint to that. Um, and uh, I believe you can uh, do recordings as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those are two possibilities. Um, there's a comment here about images. I'm looking for a tool. This is from Iphigenia. says, I'm looking for a tool which will give me free, right, uh, free copyright free images uh, to include in lessons. Uh, they say they found Pixabay, but it's only free for a month, it says. Uh, can we suggest anything else? But I, as far as I'm aware, Pixabay is, is completely free. What's not free are the ones that come at the top of Pixabay when you look something up. Yeah, you've you got to be careful. Stuff, you have to be careful. But the Pixabay stuff should be free and not, not just for a month. Right. Um, the images that I've been using today for my backgrounds are from Pixabay. Right. Um, these, I checked them out and they were freely available. There's no charge. You can use them commercially for education, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, when, you find, when you find an image on Pixabay, um, look at the conditions. If they can be used for commercial purposes with no charge whatsoever or for education, whatever it says, then you're mm -hmm. okay with those. Those are fine. As you can see, I just use my own. I don't sort of, I do use some Pixabay stuff, but I quite like getting my camera out and just taking pictures of my, my yeah. own stuff. And then obviously that, that they're free to use for me. So that, that's another option right. if you can, is just use but your own. This, this, is a, this is a point to bring up with students because um, you know nowadays people just go online, they download any picture and they just use it as if it, mm -hmm. there were, it was their own picture. Um, we need to educate students about this. Um, yeah. that they need to make sure that what they're using um, is not infringing on somebody else's copyright uh, well, rights. Exactly. I mean, now that everybody is uh, forced to go online, it's a great opportunity. It's an, it's a, it's an opportunity to teach something else about, you know, being responsible online right. internet right. users. Um, okay, there's a couple of questions here about the inventory, Joe. Uh, Katarina uh, says WebEx is selected by the Greek Ministry of Education and it's obligatory for Greek state school teachers. Can the inventory be seen via WebEx? Many are asking about this. Okay, well, WebEx um, can uh, share your screen. Mm -hmm. So if on your screen you've got the inventory, then you can just share that via mm -hmm. WebEx. Okay. That could be okay. Um, um, WebEx is not on the inventory um, because of the reason that it's not free. There's no free version that you can use exactly. uh, um, with students for your classes, really. Um, mm -hmm. If the institutions have bought it um, or if the, the Ministry of Education has bought it, then fine. Mm -hmm. And then there's a question here from Calliope, which is, do you also check inventory items in terms of trustworthiness? Are they all safe to download and use? I think I know the answer. Yes, we do. I mean, it's <laughs> part of the vetting. It's part of the yeah. vetting. We make sure that it's not a fly-by-night application that's going to have, I don't want to say the V word right here, but uh, mm -hmm. viruses. Um, yeah. We're all kind of, we're not tech experts, we're not technologists, but we're all tech 
aficionados, we all like technology. So, I mean, I have a Mac and I've got a PC, so I'm gonna try these things on my Mac and on my PC and on my iPhone. And I think that's also important to think about, you know, the different types of users that are out there and, and make sure that it's safe for all of those, right? Um, and then we've got a question, a different kind of question here, Joe, for you about testing. Elena would like uh, would like some advice on synchronous examination software for testing languages, for example. Do you have any suggestions? This is a big one. Um, mm. Right now, I uh, for language testing, mm -hmm. um, it's a problem. Yeah. We can't bring hundreds of students together to take a three hour or four hour official language exam yeah. in the, under the present circumstances, right? However, there are students, especially at the university level that need to accredit um, a certain level, B1 or B2, you know, the typical levels that people need to accredit in order to finish their university degrees. Mm -hmm. But since they cannot do um, these exams that we hold face to face, the three hour, four hour exams, what do they do, all right? Um, so many big companies, um, big testing institutions um, are starting to go online for now. We'll see if they continue with this. Cambridge has come out with an online version of an exam, certification exam that they call LinguaSkill. Um, IATEFL is also offering an online version, a home version. Um, and also TOEFL is offering um, an online version. They're using different, slightly different uh, methods to proctor, to invigilate these exams, mm -hmm. I believe, but I'm not 100% sure that TOEFL is using um, somebody behind a camera and actually watching what the students are doing while they're taking the tests. Um, others like, um, um, Sorry, LinguaSkill is using facial recognition software, mm -hmm. all right, for these. They're also, they're using a system that uses facial recognition. It blocks your computer so that you cannot go anything. You can't open anything else. You can't open Word documents. You can't open a browser. You can't do anything else. And pictures are being taken of you um, as you're doing the exam or you're being filmed. I'm not 100% sure about that. This is all happening very, 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 very quickly, right? Yeah. Um, but for me, all of this, and if anybody is interested in a software company, I know there's one called Sumati that Cambridge is using um, for their online um, facial recognition. Um, mm -hmm software or service. Mm -hmm. um, but all of this, I think, is going to cause us to question what we do in terms of language testing, right? Um, yeah. This is my personal opinion. It might be a little bit uh, controversial to some people, but um, we have put a lot of our eggs in the language teaching profession in the testing basket. The testing basket, which means um, that in order to accredit your level, you need to sit an exam that is three or four hours long, a face-to-face -face exam. And for many people, this is the only valid way to accredit your level, yeah. right? Um, I think with this crisis, it's going to force us to rethink things. Mm. Um, is that the model? Is that the only model that we have for assessing and accrediting students level, these types of exams? Or do we need to consider other options? Do we need to consider exams where people can take them from home? If we have the software that can guarantee, right? And there's nothing that 100% can guarantee that the student is the person who's doing the exam. We can't even do that face to face. In yeah. Spain, we look at the national identity card and we look at the student's face, but sometimes, there are differences. Sometimes you don't, you can't tell if it's really the same person. You think it is, yeah. and you might have doubts, but you let it slide, right? Um, as an examiner, sometimes that happens. Um, now, in terms of uh, this testing type of thing, we might want to consider online tests, take, you know, tests that you can do from home. 
or possibly we might want to give more weight to systems of continuous assessment as a form of accrediting levels, right? I think this whole thing, this, this not being able to do these types of exams is actually, as I said before, going to make us rethink everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm off my soapbox now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually looking at the at the chat now live just to see if there is any last minute. And somebody just asked if we could repeat what we said about um, WebEx and uh, the inventory. I just, somebody's just saying, could you Oh, just okay. Um, if you're giving a WebEx, WebEx session and you want to show the inventory to someone else, right, to other people who are attending the WebEx section, the session, um, you simply share your screen Mm -hmm. You have the inventory on your screen and you share that with them. And that should happen. That should be a, a possibility, I think. Wonderful. Okay. okay. Um, do you want to see how the, um, do you remember the one that we did at the beginning, the adjectives? Do you want to see how many people have answered Let's it? Take now? A look. I'm, going share, I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is awesome. You guys are awesome. You guys rock. Okay. So as you can see, Joe, let me know when you can see that. There it is. Okay, yeah. 1800. 1800. 1800 responses. Wow. That's fantastic. That's really awesome. 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 That's really awesome. Um, so it's coming up to nearly an hour and a half, Joe, that we've been oh, yapping yes. on. Um, time for a beer, isn't it? <laughs> Just about. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we go, before we go, we just have one little extra task for you. Now, um, I'm still sharing my screen, so you should be able to see that. Um, we've, we've set up a Padlet, another tool we really like as well. Um, we've set up a Padlet, a slightly different version of a Padlet that we normally use, because we realized there would be few, you know, we thought there'd be a few hundred people, and we thought that if there are a few hundred post-it notes on a Padlet, it might be a bit difficult to see. Um, so we've set it up slightly differently. Um, thanks to one of our team members who saw this in another session somewhere else, I think. Um, you see, teachers are the best at learning and stealing from other people, it's great. Anyway, the link to this, uh, you can actually just copy out that um, URL onto your browser or underneath the YouTube Live, the direct link is there as well, okay? So if you click on that, I'll leave it there for a second and just follow the instructions. There's a question there at the top asking, uh, what you will take away from today. Okay, so I'll just wait for a couple of seconds and leave that on the screen to give people time to write that down. But okay. if you we're going to leave this up for 10 minutes after we finish. We are, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna, can... I'll click on the link. Should we take a look and see what it looks like? When yeah, just take a quick it? look. And we're saying select your location and note down three things you'll take away from this webinar. And I can see a few people had already seen the link in the description, that's great. And I've already put down some, some answers down here. So to do this, you just click on the plus sign and select your, type your location, put the town or whatever, and then you can actually fill out the post-it. And look, the post-its are appearing. Yes. That's awesome, look at that. Greece, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, that's me. There, look, see, I've, I've already zipped it. Um, we've got somebody over here in, where's that? That's about Soria somewhere, somewhere like Soria, isn't it? I, I think I think it's in Cantabria or Pasco. That's over I'm in Galicia. Sure. Galicia. And oh, somebody Greece, from Greece is going to, somebody... it's going to be so heavy, it's going to fall into the sea. <laughs> with so many of these flags here. <laughs> Oh, no. It is going to fall into the sea, Joe. It is. I'm so sorry to Grace. You're going to fall in the sea. <laughs> OK. OK. I hope it doesn't cause an earthquake or anything like that. That's... <laughs> so we'll leave, we'll leave this up here um, yeah. and feel free to go adding your, your, your notes there. Um, but I think that's about it from us, isn't it, Joe? Do yeah. Anything else no. to say? Um, just thanks for being with us. Um, we really enjoyed the session. Yeah. Um, we sincerely hope it's been useful for you, giving you new ideas for your online teaching. Um, and just uh, just to let you know, if you didn't know this already, um, our team is offering another webinar in French on Friday, May 8th, also at 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock in Greece, 5 o'clock Central European Standard or, uh, Summertime. And we're also offering another one. 
What? Yeah, six, six starts at six o'clock in Greece. Six yeah. o'clock in Greece, five o'clock in Central Europe, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're also offering another one in German on Monday, May 8th. So please tell your friends if you liked our yeah. session and you think it might be useful for them. Um, mm -hmm. We'd like to give special thanks to everybody who has been supporting us behind the scenes, right? Um, our colleagues, it's not just us um, here in Barcelona or on the Costa Brava, Jackie's on the Costa Brava. Um, mm -hmm. We have other colleagues in the UK, in Germany, um, in Austria, in Slovenia, that are providing us with backup for this session. So we really, really want to express our um, appreciation to them. Um, Pauline and Sarah Heiser, who have helped collect the comments uh, from the YouTube channel. Um, we'd like to thank Mart Martina Emke, who has been womaning the Twitter, Twitter feed for us, and to Christian Friedrich and to Barbara Gibret for their tech support behind the scenes from the ECML. And of course, thank you once again to the ECML for sponsoring this event. Um, it's been wonderful. It's always wonderful to work for the ECML. And uh, if you don't know about the ECML, check out their website. Check yeah. out their website. There are lots of resources available for teachers, not just tech, but on lots of other things as well. Um, please take a look at the information that's below. Uh, we've got uh, suggestions if you want to find more out more about um, the ICT Rev project. Um, if you want to read a little bit more about our theoretical background um, for our workshops, et cetera, et cetera, just please take a look at that, okay? And I think that's about it from us, from Barcelona. And from the Costa Brava. So yes. Here's signing out, Jackie Robbins from the Costa Brava. <laughs> Jackie, could you put up the slide again with the URL to the... To, yep, sure, I'll put up the slide again. So I'm gonna close that, oh, hang on a minute. Oh, I've got so many things open and my computer okay. is starting, my computer is starting to struggle. Yeah, mine is starting to smoke. <laughs> Uh, no, I can't put up the slide again. The URL for this is underneath. It's underneath oh, okay. in the description. So for the Padlet, you'll find the URL in the description below the YouTube there. Yeah, so I was just going to leave this map on there. Okay, so we'll leave, let's leave the map up and people can watch it grow. We'll leave yeah. it up for another 10 minutes. Yeah. All right, and we're looking forward to hearing your comments. Awesome. Okay. Really great to see you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Be safe, be healthy.